Hey church, today we're in Luke chapter 20. And in this chapter, we see several things happening. We see Jesus being questioned, his authority being questioned, who he really was. Uh, we see him teaching on taxes. We see him teaching a little bit on marriage and, and the afterlife and lots of things happening. But I want us to look today um, at the parable that Jesus tells, beginning in verse 9. He tells this parable of a vineyard owner. And the vineyard owner um, makes an agreement with some farmers that they can rent the land from him. And in return, in this agreement, he would get uh, part of the crop at harvest time. And so the Bible says that he, he rents to the farmers and he goes away for some time. And when the first harvest comes, he sends a servant uh, to collect his portion of the harvest. And when the servant gets there, uh, the farmers beat him and send him on his way empty-handed. They do not give him what uh, the landowner is, is owed. And, and so he sends another servant. And again, that servant is beaten and sent on his way. And he sends another servant. So we've got three servants that are sent so far. And for the third one, same exact thing. He's beaten, sent on his way, empty-handed. They are not uh, fulfilling their side of the agreement. And so the landowner says, what now can I do? Maybe I can send my son whom I love, my own son, not just some servant, my own son, I will send to them. Will they maybe respect him? And so he sends his own son. And when the farmers see that it's his son, they, they get this bright idea that, hey, if we were to take the son out of the equation, then there would be no heir to the landowner's uh, wealth and his, his land and everything that was due to the son. And so they devise this plan and they kill the landowner's son. And so when that happens, Jesus says to the people that are listening to the parable, he says, what then will happen? Will the, will the vineyard owner, will he go back and will he kill all of the tenants and, and then give the vineyard to someone else? And the people are listening. And they make this one statement. They say, God forbid. Like, no, that, that couldn't happen. And Jesus does what, what he so greatly does. And he, he looks at him. He's got him right where he wants him. And he says, well, then what is the meaning of that which is written? And he goes back to Psalms. And he says this, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces and anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. Now, what's he referring to? Well, let, let's back up just a second. Every one of these servants that the vineyard owner sends, they re represent uh, a prophet that had gone ahead of Jesus to share the good news, but were rejected. And so we see the vineyard owner being God, and now he is sending his only son, which would be Jesus. And Jesus would be rejected, and he would be killed. And so Jesus is referring to himself. He's saying the stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's, that's me. That's Jesus. That, that's what he's saying. This is me. And, and what is a cornerstone? Well, uh, you know, when a foundation was laid, uh, the first block that went in, the very first block was the cornerstone. Because from that one block, all the blocks then uh, were built upon each other. But it had to start somewhere. And it was the cornerstone. And that's Jesus. And he's basically asserting his authority here. He's, he's proclaiming who he is. He is before all things. He has power over all things. And the teachers of the law and the chief priest in verse 19 says they looked for a way uh, to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them. Yeah, all right, so they're feeling a little guilty here. Uh, they're like, all right, he's talking to us here. Uh, we got to do something about it because he's proclaiming to be, uh, have all authority, all power as he does. Now, uh, in this season, Easter, Easter week here, uh, we, we stop and we recognize that Jesus did in fact come to die in our place. And he was rejected um, in our place and he died a death in our place. But we do know, praise the Lord, that he is alive and well again because God had power over over the grave. I want to leave us with this thought today. This is in Acts chapter 4. Peter has just healed a man and he's been in question because of it. And he says this, 
Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is, and he quotes the same psalm, Jesus is the stone that was uh, that you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. And then this is it. This sums up everything that we believe as Christians. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Jesus came. He came to suffer and to die in our place. But at the end of the day, he's alive, he's well, and he is the cornerstone of our faith. He's the cornerstone of everything that we believe. He holds all authority, all power, and our salvation is found in no one else but through Jesus.